Welcome to the Queen Divas Queens of Fitness podcast. Join your hosts, three-time WBFF world champions and WBFF royalty, Alicia Gowans and Stephanie Ayala McHugh, as we explore all things female health, training, competing, mindset, and living the fitness life every day. So welcome everybody back to an episode of Queen Diva's Fitness Podcast with my girl, Stephanie. We have had a few weeks off because we've had so many things going on. And for everyone listening that, um, you know, maybe still following my journey or has just tuned into my journey, we've had so much going on with this pregnancy, which I'm super excited about. But it's- Yes, I'm so pumped for you, Ali. This I'm, is just I'm like, oh. getting more and more excited and a little bit less stressed. As You're the- glowing, by the way. And I'm sure oh. you're getting that all the time. It's just, it's just that I have a fat face now. <laughs> oh, shut up. I mean, seriously, like you just are just so yeah. happy and you could see that. And honestly, like, I'm just so, so happy for you oh, and Christos you. and everything you're undergoing. So uh, talk, actually, how are you feeling? Just catch everybody up since we're this following. Is, this has been the thing, actually. I haven't had morning sickness like this before. Like previously, mm. I would get a little bit of nausea in the afternoon after lunch. Like so, I, so I could I could front load my day, get most of my calories in in the morning, be fine, then get my little bit of nausea and just kind of eat a little bit less, but not you know miss things. This time around, oh my god, like. I'm just having waves at random times. Sometimes they last all bloody day long. Sometimes I wake up already feeling sick or I'll wake up in the middle of the night feeling sick. Like it's random. The and beauty was, of pregnancy. Oh my God, right? <laughs> it's, it was, it's worst, I think, between, it sort of started about six weeks mm-hmm. and it was probably the worst for me, actually. They say week nine and 10 is meant to be your worst with the biggest surge. For me personally, I felt like week eight and I felt like week seven and eight, but more so eight was probably my absolute worst. Nine was pretty bad. I'm halfway through week 10 now and I feel like the last couple of days have eased a little bit, which is nice. But um, the, the thing that's really sort of getting me is that I've had to have these random appointments with doctors because obviously this whole I've never done this I've done different this process right? yeah like different process mm-hmm. and I've had to have like these very specific catch-ups with my IVF specialist and my team there before they handed me over to my obstetrician my my which you guys call ob gynes um the gynecologist so so I've been handed over to yeah. her and that's why we missed recording last week because the only time she could see me before we went to Canberra was right at our recording time and I'm like oh my god hey there's priorities guys there's nature of it. everything is smooth sailing and make sure we got everything you know in in the right place in the right yeah. environment for her and um I'm I'm so so just stoked to, to, to continue watching the process you know yeah. and um you know I think so it's really we were driving down here, right? Because we drove down to Canberra. I'm in Canberra at the moment. We're spending Canberra with, um, you know, all of the in-laws and extended family. Um, in Christmas Canberra. time, holidays. Yeah. Exactly. So we drove down with the dogs. And this is where I, I thought today's topic for us would be really great one to discuss all things Christmas, the festive season, how My we navigate. Time of the year. <laughs> yes. It's the most wonderful time. Of- it really is. Honestly, really guys, like for me, it, it just gets me so joyful besides the, okay. So this is what I think is so funny about, uh, you know, us and Australia being on such different spectrums of the world, because we enjoy a very cold Christmas most of the yes. year, you know, well, most of the time it, it, every year is what I'm trying to say. And you guys usually have a nice summer, hot Christmas, which yeah. I think is very different. Um, and so we're used to this. Know, I'm always so bloody jealous of you guys for two big <laughs> reasons, right? You can't hide shit when it's summertime and you're rolling around and you're sweating in your bloody bikini. <laughs> That's so sweating. true. You can't hide anything. And when you eat, it's like you can't even unbutton anything to let people <sighs> out because you're not wearing much clothing to start with. And then you just feel like, you know, you look like Shamu the whale for the next three days. That's kind of what it's like. <laughs> anything to do with a little bit of extra sodium or carbs or anything. And you, oh, yeah. you just literally hold water on top of the fact that it's the climate, right? Whenever I'm in 
you know New York every year after Atlantic <sighs> City. You're layer I'm after all layer. Around. I'm all yeah. rugged up and I'm like, I mm-hmm. love this. And I'm I'm drinking eggnog and I'm having everything oh, yeah. warm and fuzzies and cinnamon and it's it's just got a vibe. We are Total horns on the goddamn Barbie, mate. Like we're so different here. Just like whenever you know Starbucks rolls out pumpkin spice, you oh, already know it's it. holiday season here. It. Like it is everywhere, pumpkin spice, everything. And it's just awesome. really such a season to where every store you go, unfortunately, is just shitted with Christmas shit. You know, honestly, like everywhere you go, which I love. Like I'm such a Christmas person. So I absolutely adore the lights. Like for me, I can just get mesmerized by all the places that you know have christmas lights up so that is like more of a traditional you know thing here is everyone does christmas lights christmas trees so we start going into that type of phase as soon as you know just fall gets here of course halloween gets a little bit of wait until like the first of december to like set things up because that's kind of what we tend to do here however having said that shopping centers obviously because they want to market to all the mums and all the kids right they're right. literally putting christmas stuff up in like october <laughs> <laughs> so actually there's this funny thing here like um it's more of like a debate or somewhat of a difference amongst the country as to when do you really start putting up your christmas tree and your christmas lights and for a tradition side of things like our family has always done it like right after thanksgiving like that has just been one of the things that we have normally always done like after you have thanksgiving around the week after or even like after thanksgiving day like if you don't go shopping and doing like that crazy black friday sale kind of thing which nowadays with online you really don't have to go and do all that madness like you could just take advantage of like some really good sales online um but anyway like that would normally be the tradition so it does lead up to i guess december 1st essentially like in that case but it's funny because we see sometimes like um some other families like they really don't put it up until like december time right and like this year is probably the first year ali that i've watched people put it up november 1st like (laughs) The, the week of like you know what i'm saying november hitting you know, and it's just getting cold me, people were just i want that's, my everyone, that's everyone going that's literally everyone going fuck covid this yes is, i swear I on santa <laughs> like I, that, that, they were just so over the yeah. whole and and, not, and you have nothing to do right like you're <laughs> either having some extra time and you can put up your christmas tree why not like at the beginning yeah. of november so i watched a lot of people start decorations a lot sooner. And this is when I was sick given, right? Like I was down. I did not really have any really a source of energy to really even get around to work out or anything. So then we had Atlantic City. So we actually just got back from Atlantic City. um, The last show of the year here for WBFF in the US was the USA Championships. And it was a trip. Like we definitely took like a week to be able to go before and, you know, post show. And we just kind of got back and I did didn't start doing my decorations or even Christmas lights until I got back from Atlantic yeah. City, which was last week. So I just got up my tree, I think last Wednesday and got my lights up. And so now I look all Christmas style, but I was one of the late, you know, late oh, people. I was party. late. We were late too. We were late too. Cause I had so much going on trying to prepare, you know, the office for the end of the year. We had, you know, athletes coming in AC. I had athletes competing in a few different shows outside of WBFF yeah. that were going in New Zealand, um, because they were the only shows they could do the pool. Yes, exactly. The last shows. So cancel. That's right. So mm-hmm. that just, let's just get you on a stage. Um, so we were preparing for all of that, and then on top of that, I had my morning sickness that was flooring oh. me. Some days I had all these appointments going on, and I turned right. around to Chris and went, "Holy crap! It's like the tenth of December." <laughs> well, that's exactly what happened to me. Like what the hell? So you know what we did? I don't know if you have this in the states. We have these places here in Australia. It's called the Christmas Shack. Hmm, what is it? It's a massive, big, like, like store, like a Walgreens, but it's only okay. about Christmas. It's oh, only cool. Christmas all year round. Well, not for Halloween here. I guess I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm in the South too. So we have to kind of yeah. understand that there's different types of Christmas throughout the U.S. Like the Northeast and like, not just the Northeast, like the North, take it a little bit, even more to the next level. Always making sure they, they get like fresh Christmas trees cut down their tree, oh, you know, kind of that. thing, like which is very admirable because you live in the snow. Like we exactly. don't even get snow. We just barely got like a 
you know, thunder, you know, actually a, a snow um, storm is what I'm trying to say in February, whenever I told you guys, like we had a power outage, uh, that was like really one of the first times we've had that type of snow here. So up north is a little type of different style of Christmas because they do get a lot more snow. They probably have to shovel a lot of the time versus we don't have to do that here. Um, but you guys have summer. So right. that is very different. If we, if we had a fresh tree, it would wilt in the humidity in 25 minutes. <laughs> like, honestly, we just couldn't in no chance, like not even anywhere in Australia would that, that thing last. But I love that. I love the fresh trees. I love it's that whole good. concept over there. It's amazing. But we don't have that. So we have like the full plastic everything. <laughs> That's what I do just because I can store yeah. it and I can just re, you know, put up a tree. Yeah. Which, by the way, my goal is to be able to get one of the very big tall trees of like 15 feet, but I need, a, I need a house that fits that purse. So we definitely have to get a new house for that to fit. And that is essentially the goal, you know, right now with everything going up and uh, just inflation hitting here in the US very big is um, very difficult to even go into real estate and try to buy a home right now. Uh, so it's something we'll put on the back burner. But traditionally, you know, I think right now everyone is really gathering and I really love seeing this. I think this is the, the most united Christmas we've had so far, like as far as seeing people come back together, like everyone was scared to even gather last year, right? Like yeah. during COVID year, like you didn't even have the comfort, like comfortability of knowing I can go and visit my family, my friends, you probably didn't even have the ability because you're maybe we're locked down. So that, uh, was like here. that was like here. And to be honest with you, right? Our borders in our own country one of them is still shut so the whole of western australia right now is completely closed to the rest of australia shut up yeah you can go back into western australia if you're a double vaccinated resident returning but then there's still some requirements around that um but queensland only just opened its border where where we live queensland only just opened its border two three days ago so and they opened early yeah. because we had a higher vaccination rate but it's still the same if you are unvaccinated, you live in Queensland, you wouldn't want to leave because to get back, you've got a hotel quarantine two weeks. Like it's ridiculous. So you're telling me that every, even if you're Australian, like a citizen yes. or Australian, yes. doesn't matter if you, yes. honestly, you must I just can't. You travel just, back. You can't travel within Australia. state to state. Like you just can't well, go from state to state. Difficulties. There's quarantine difficulties, right? So we're lucky now that we've opened up. We can exit to come down to Canberra. So this is the first time we've been to Canberra, which you guys know we usually live between the two states, mm -hmm. basically. And um, this is the first time we've been here in like, for me personally, this is the first time I've come back in almost six months because I haven't been able to. Christos came back without me because I was going through the cycle stuff. I couldn't leave yeah. Brisbane. And he came back for a family holiday before um, I could come down with him. And they, they started the lockdown while he was here, he got on the first plane and it was the last plane out of here. And he just got home to me in time, but he's been with oh me in Brisbane with no, you know, return trips now for four months. So it's been a long time, right? And anyway, yeah. to get back, to get back in there, um, you have to be double vaccinated. You have to show that you also have to have a test done before you leave this state within 24 to 48 hours of leaving, you've got to have a, uh, like a, a test that says you don't have COVID. Then you've got to give that over. Then you've got to go to your house when you get home. You've got to stay in your house and have another negative test to say you don't have it before you can leave your home. Kidding me. They want, how do they monitor this? Do they call you guys? They call, they call like, any, babe, the last time we did, we had this happen in Canberra, the feds turned up at our doorstep to check because you're traveling a lot. inside the house yeah oh so i wouldn't God. risk it i would literally do the right thing and, and camp at home if i needed to but i mean i'm so much happier with that 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 i can do because before it was like two week hotel which you is don't understand how my mind over here is just poof, just i know, I know. because so that's now, like letting me know i can't go to california yeah. california is locked down you know which essentially they are but that means we can still travel from state to state yeah. without having to prove you know obviously that we are vaccinated although i will say new york is getting to a point where you have to show proof of vaccination to do activities we physically you know, have to show it everywhere so like the only place you can go that you don't have to show it at the moment is like you know to the grocery store and if it's like a big retail shopping center you can go through there but like that's it if you want to go to a restaurant a cafe a bar a club a a show a footy game like anything at all Jesus. you've got to show it on entry 
it's pretty intense that's very intense i don't understand how i don't understand how you guys all comply with this like i think this is the hardest part i know you guys have to we're like 80 like the lowest state vaccination rate i think at the moment is 80 so it's high you know in um in canberra at the moment we are 95 percent vaccinated in canberra that's that's madness that's That's like that's really every single person everyone it's crazy right such good numbers but Wow. At least you guys are able to get, I guess, the vaccinations up. Like, yeah. I think that's at least um, what's the mandatory side. Well, um, that is, that's nuts. I'm so sorry, guys, that you guys are still like dealing with a lot of this uh, so, just madness. But uh, the other you know. thing, too, when you think about this, right? Okay. You think about how many people go, oh, look, because we, we've done this on occasion, too. We'll go do like a Christmas breakfast that's fully catered somewhere, right? Rather than having to cook or prepare or host, mm-hmm. you might plan it to be catered somewhere. If you've got family that's not vaccinated, you can't do that anymore. You've got people that can't come. Okay, so for argument's sake, we're having a family. Uh, we have an annual family party here in in Canberra every single year around the same time of the year. And um, at, at at this stage, because there are some really high risk people, like you know, I guess I'm one of them being pregnant, even though I'm vaccinated, yeah, sure. it doesn't matter. Um, it's still a risk for me to contract it whenever, right? So I'm one, there's several really elderly, like Yaya's like 96, babe. She's not a spring chicken and she, yeah, she, she needs to take risk. care. And so definitely. if you're not double vaccinated, you can't even come to the party. And it yeah, kind of that's... has to be like that because of the risk factor, right? Yeah. So, you know, there's things like that where you're just like, okay, well, Christmas is less affected by the fact that you can travel now at least but it's still affected because even for us we're we're putting on a um you know christmas dinner for our really close friends and family in brisbane Mm -hmm. um and it's the same deal i've got four i've got four people in my closest circle that are not vaccinated so we couldn't go anywhere or hold it anywhere. We have to host it at home. Bring it at the house, which exactly. like that's tradition. I think most of the time here in the U.S., like I not don't get me wrong. Like I think um, there are places that are going to be open, but just know it's like ghost town here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. on Christmas Day. Yeah. Everything yeah. is closed. Like everybody is off. Nobody works. Everybody is at home. And if you don't have food, you're screwed because the grocery stores are even closed. Okay. Like everything is closed. It just feels almost eerie sometimes if you really are trying to do stuff because there's nothing open. So it's about really honestly traditionally spending time with your family, right? I think like one of the best things about uh, the holidays is that being able to be present with your family. And that is the best present as much as yes, it's interchanging gifts and, you know, obviously like doing more of like the food festivities, um, which I find is the reason why most Americans, and I'll talk about Americans on my end here, because I feel like this is more of an ongoing issue here um, is that the the traditional overeating and the fact that it's just like a Thanksgiving, right? Like maybe you guys can relate to that on a Thanksgiving feast. Um, The fact that you kind of always have all these goods, all these drinks, and because everything is shut down, everyone has their own tradition. Mm -hmm. Everyone does their own style, but I mean, I can just definitely be more abroad that everyone's going to overeat. Like that is just kind of part of it. And it's just like kind of eating uh, certain foods, like kind of like Thanksgiving, like turkey, ham, like if you're um, Hispanic, you're definitely going to have tamales involved in there you know and like having uh oh yeah in having like you know of course food and 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 the drinks kind of really overtake I think that's just kind of a a thing across the world right like just when you're celebrating anything um so it just becomes that because of this overeating you just overindulge and just really go out of hand like right like you just go to the point where you just cannot even move like you're just a potato couch like freaking you know like just move like just a freaking ball like just to completely want to take a nap want to um, hibernate. yeah absolutely and so like, I think that's the issue you know like just the fact that there's so many things available at most of these places you go whether if it's grandma's or you know your your yeah. grandparents or just uh, well just overall like any any in-laws just right like anybody that does any in-home because it's usually at home so it's all baked goods and uh you know just traditional dishes that they may have in the family so uh, overeating is definitely an issue and I think that this is like one of the areas where we all have to be prepared when we're going to places right because we either don't want to be disrespectful and not have certain things um but at the same time be very aware of what's in it and just kind of what's a better option for you um do you guys have like traditional stuff like from food well, wise you guys normally yes. would eat and have 
definitely and like <laughs> even between our two families like you know my side of it is you know german danish so mm. only second generation Australians so immigrated out and um, gave birth to my mum here. So we have some Aussie influence, but then we've also, so it's, it's very, Ooh, um, it's a very different style of food yeah. and what we put on the table versus when we're in Canberra and it's a full Greek affair. So it's like, literally <laughs> Chris also will be outside with the smoker with brisket, like a massive mm. big rack of brisket. Then he has a whole lamb on the spit. Like it's totally different, right? So it's oh. all, these Delicious. traditional big smoked and, and roasted red meats. Whereas with yeah. my family, it's all the fresh seafoods and, you know, we do turkey and we do mm. um, big pork knuckles. So it's, it's like this eclectic that's pork knuckle. Oh, uh, that's a big German. It's a big German thing. It's, it's so good. Well, what but, um, is it? What's it's pork just, knuckle? It's is it like a this big, it's literally this big side of pork. So I've got to, I'll try and find a, a portion of the pork. Like it's a, it's a part yeah, of the pork. Big, okay. so it's, yeah. It's like, it's got well, a big boned bit. And then you've got this big roll of meat ooh, on it. I see. I gotcha. Ooh, that's awesome. So we have, we have that sort of thing. And to be honest, most of the stuff that, you know, we prepare on my side gets served, you know, cold or cool, which is pretty sort of relevant when you think about our climate. <laughs> <laughs> Queensland oh, is so yeah, hot. Usually, this day is stinking. So it's like <laughs> it's it's so bad. Like you are literally. Oh, no, like, we're chasing hot cocoa, and if you're a Spaniard, you're chasing like chocolate or something. You know, <laughs> like you couldn't honestly couldn't have anything hot. Like you, you literally would be dying. But um, you're always chasing something hot here. Yeah. Like whenever it's See, usually. I would love that. that. I would love that. Like a dog, and, or if you're doing, you know, hot chocolate, or like I was saying, like mm-hmm. Hispanics always know what I'm talking about when I say champurrado. It's like the version of their hot chocolate. Oh, wow. you know? So it, it's just all hot. And, you know, I just try to warm you up because normally yeah, you are wow. trying to stay warm. So, so that's I, find, I find like if, if it's my family style of food, I find that really easy to, um, to be good with, to be clean with. It's like, it's a lot of fresh salads. It's very light. It's very light seafood a lot of white meat not red meat not heavy dark meat it's like really quite light to digest too I don't sit real heavy with it we don't do a lot of really big baked goods we do um like I said all that fresh items and then we will have like big fresh fruit platters so we're really it's Americans really are going to be like, what the hell, Ali? Really what kind of Christmas easy. feast is this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very quite easy thing to prep make. Prep friendly, right? y'all. Prep friendly. <laughs> like, it's actually very, right? And, you know, I think probably like the worst thing that you would have I don't know if you guys do pavlovas, but we do a lot of pavlovas and trifles. So our desserts are cold. Hey, for any of my Americans, I don't know what the hell she's saying right now, like at all. <laughs> I don't know what the hell Pavlo is like this meringue, like this meringue cake with all this fresh, like, okay, I get, I get, I'm following. You'd love it, it's beautiful. Um, we do that, and we do like trifles, like a fruit cake, y'all. Fruit cake, yeah. <laughs> this is your, your fruit cake, and the fruit cake you get in the UK is like quite dense and like, thick. okay, we just add extra fat to everything, okay? Like, that is just what we totally do. Different. We add every butter and every milk under the sun, like, I swear, we'll yeah, add every you know, fat and every well, sugar to make it very, very dense. I so, would probably put on five <laughs> pillows. Look, you walk into any American feast, it's going to be like calories just wa- like coming out of side of the dish. All right. You've got cookies and you've got pies. Oh, and you've wow. Got every type of casserole. And like, you've got all these traditional meats wow. like you're talking about, like, but it's more of like your turkey and ham. And maybe grandma has a special dish that she might make. But if you're talking about, let's go, go a little Hispanic here, which is still very Americanized, more Latin American, I guess, if we're talking about, it's going to be like enchiladas and tamales yeah. and like all these other things that are going to be very yeah. dense and very high in calorie. And on top of that, there's always going to be a dessert section. There's always yeah. going to be what like oh my god the endless amount of freaking sugar cookies and christmas cookies and you know obviously like i said all the pies and any type of cake and you definitely are going to have some tres leches and if you're obviously you guys a- have so <laughs> much more like stuff it's ridiculous <laughs> it's not good okay it's a problem it's a it, if you go into the stores like they're promoting 
just whipped cream and pumpkin pie and they're just giving you shoving in your face because this is just the marketing technique here in the states like they're trying to get you to overindulge and this is the yeah. problem i'm telling you this is yeah. such an issue here to where and we you know, just overeat do you problem. start in the morning do you wake up and have like a christmas breakfast or do you tend to wake up and do like the presents and everything and then sort of hit like an early an early lunch or like what happens there You know, I think it's very different for everyone because like for myself growing up, I did grow up here, you know, in California at the time, you know, and then I transitioned to Texas, but from growing up as a kid, like we always, always, this is a tradition for us. And I think this is from what I've learned, it's maybe more Latin American um, where we do everything Christmas Eve, like we party we, we right. eat, we okay. dinner, like everything, like we have our dinner meal Christmas Eve that rolls over into your party and drinking that you receive, <laughs> you receive Christmas, okay, you receive Christmas at midnight, and at midnight we party, and well, obviously we're partying the whole time, and we're in gathered and, you know, obviously enjoying our family, but at the same time, as a kid, all you're doing is waiting for midnight to be able to open your presents, right? Like just to be able to get in there and open them. So that is what I've traditionally done. And when I, you know, met Carrie started, you know, hanging out and and my friends have always kind of had different traditions, but I like always thought mine was always so cool because I'm like, I get to open my presents before you. Okay. You you have to wait till the morning. I don't get what else. (laughs) <laughs> we always did midnight mass. So we were always, you know, in a household that were evangelistic. So we would be at midnight mass on Christmas Eve. And then you'd go home and it would be straight into bed because obviously Santa. Oh, no. Oh, no. But look, <laughs> what I find so interesting is that, that I've known so many people that that, that is just yeah. kind of what they've done. Like they do things on Christmas Day. And Carrie, my husband being one of them, you know, that when he met me, he's just like, what are you doing? Like <laughs> opening up your Christmas present at midnight yeah. you know what I mean I'm yeah. like it's, so it's funny. midnight like hello yeah, you're supposed you know, to open one thing though that we always did which was different to everyone else was because we would do the midnight mass and go to bed and sometimes you know as a kid you just even Christmas you go waking out. up early yeah. you'd be knackered parents would always let us open one present on Christmas. that's what he said that's we exactly yeah and then we'd wake up and we'd open up the rest and it would be usually for us like a light breakfast then I would always eat probably the predominant volume of my food for the whole day at lunchtime, really. And then you'd I, like, I don't know about everyone else, but I never really ever went over calories. For the simple fact that okay, maybe it's I would feel so people. full. <laughs> I would feel so full that come dinner time, I would literally be picking on like maybe just a bit of pure protein because I'd just be, I'd just be a mess. Like I'd literally eat, Probably three quarters of my calories for the day. <laughs> I think honestly, like what but, you're referring to the traditional yeah. side is more of a, maybe an American traditional um, <laughs> Christmas. So I'm not going to speak for a lot of maybe about people that are like, what the hell is she talking about? I'm telling you about Latin American uh, Christmas <laughs> that I grew up having my whole life. And, you know, it was leading up on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve was like literally a like drum roll and you're having the, the Christmas Eve dinner and that rolls over into you wait to receive Christmas together, which is receiving it at midnight. And then everybody, you know, gathers and opens their presents together. And it's just like a party. It's just such a vibe. But then I read, like I said, I read into this different side of traditional side of things with Carrie and Carrie's like, you know, they've only let me open a present at midnight one and I wake up the next day and we open our presents in the morning, you know, and like, that's normally what we do. What's wrong with you? Sometimes you wouldn't even get to open them first things. You'd have to go to another bloody mass. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Actually, that's so. You like the morning to day, or you know what? And so yeah. you guys normally would do like you know a day thing versus us was um you know and what I mean by us is just like maybe more of a Hispanic I guess tradition I guess would be more of you cooking throughout the day on Christmas Eve like you cook all day. Like the, the whole day, like you wake up to just cook uh, everything. If not, maybe it started on Wednesday like, or yeah, the name, I mean, the day before, right? Yeah, um, that's so it like just. Too. And, and also, too, what you find here is because there's usually, you know, like, well, in a married couple, you've got the two separate, you've got two family <laughs> sides. Normally, nine times out of 10 here, it's lunch with one, dinner with the other, or it's breakfast with one dinner with the other or it might even be that you do dinner on christmas eve with one lot of the family and then christmas day with the other i mean it's 
totally dependent upon what the circumstances are with travel and um, geography, so where they're located, but that's uh-huh. really common too. So, you know, if we weren't in completely different states, that's how we would probably celebrate it as well. I mean, when I think we think that's the hard part because of travel, not everybody gets you know to what's see hard you about there. that. Yeah, like you said I stuff myself in one sitting. How do I uh, stuff for the next? Like, <laughs> like, like, does everyone come together? We do one thing, and then I can just dominate, you know, dominate one meal. Yes, yeah, one meal. That's it. <laughs> well, no, that's the again. The problem is the overindulging and the fact that even the marketing techniques here, it's just everything is just about desserts and about trying to get yourself honestly just a freaking sugar high. It's ridiculous. I reckon like, that's my problem. <laughs> That's my problem. See, I'm filling up on all of the protein and all of the salads and all of this volumized food. It's little wonder I'm fried for the whole day. I'm not having all this. I should just cut my stuff in half and just eat a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> Just come to America. Just come to America. <laughs> I'm being serious. They'll force you. It's like a force freaking That's marketing so thing here which again this is why i feel bad sometimes with people that really don't understand labeling and don't understand marketing mm-hmm. in the way that you know nutrition labels just kind of trick you and just try to force things and then we have these subliminal messages like oh deep God. down inside of our thoughts right because we think like <laughs> we want these things like how many times have you watched a commercial right like and then you think <laughs> that you want this freaking thing and it, you really don't it's just that i'm they so glad we don't have your commercials because you have oh, a lot of those so bad boys. It's I so would be bad. Whale at Christmas <laughs> if, I, if I had all of that stuff at my fingertips. I'm gonna say it. Yes. I, yeah, I, I, I agree I with you. I and Uber Eats and is available, so you would be madness, Allie. You would oh be probably hundred percent, hundred percent. And no, so, do you guys do like the Santa stockings? Everyone has yes, a stocking. Yes, everyone has stockings, or most you people fill do. it with like. Do you fill it with actual presents or do you fill it with candy and shit? It's just like a mixture. You get like, treats, <laughs> you, know, you know, you get like, I don't know, you could throw a razor in there. I'm just being honest. Like you'll throw some freaking like funny, you know, type of little uh, quirky uh, little thing in there. And then you also do candy or you know something to eat. Um, it just depends on the person, right? Like I'll even do one for the dog. Like, come on. Like we, you know, do we have one for the dog, 100%. Yeah, like they're your kids, you so, know, you so. know for me, I think the key to this is for anyone listening, if you are not in an on season and you know you've got a decent level of calories, which you should do because you should be at maintenance or potentially surplus, I don't really think you need to do anything different. I think you just still track for your day or you go completely intuitive and flexible and you allow yourself that day because the the, the concept behind it is exactly as Steph touched on earlier it's time it's time with family and friends it's memories it's you know like we get entrenched in family feud and we battle out all these board games but family oh yeah that's like fun the one it's right fun. Yeah. so we are literally feuding over this board game for hours after we've finished stuffing ourselves and you know for me I think that's what it's all about right so Mm -hmm. the concept of turning up somewhere with tupperware unless you are legitimately deep in a prep and comp is right around the corner it shouldn't look like that people you know like and even if you are in prep like say for the people doing orlando let's use this as an example they're like i did 16 17 weeks out or whatever you can still have a diet break with higher calories over that couple of day period and it's not going to derail your prep. We're right? still far out, Paul. Yeah, like, I mean, like it's, it's still not to the point where we're, exactly. you know, in the last few weeks of prep exactly. that we would not want to do that. But exactly. we're so far out from that show that I completely agree with exactly. Ali to because not stress about it. How many sure. times have you seen people and you, you'll read a post and you're like, oh my God, this poor, this poor chick. Like she's like literally meticulously to the gram on something and like stressing out about having I've watched it too much. Something. And I'm like, I've really, I've seen people that are close. Thing. Yes, that are just really killing themselves with just the, you know what it is? Like they're stressing out about stuff that they really can't control. Like, and being with food, they think that they can control food. So they're really so, um, so meticulous. They think like I have to do it for 20 weeks out and be so on the point, Mm -hmm. like with my gram that it's really guys, it's the one gram, a few carbs, a few macros off is not going to hurt you. We actually have a good, nice little sub range that we can, you know, obviously kind of go up and down and it's kind of a cushion and we don't really have to worry about it. But what we do need to worry about is how close our show is. If the show is within a, I mean, a pre pretty pretty close duration like anywhere from four to six weeks i would not be doing any of that 
Yeah. Uh, but, but if you're, you're know, we're pretty away. lucky. I don't know a single federation that opens up too early, right? I think that's because mm-hmm. they all know that if mm-hmm. they did, no one would turn mm-hmm. up and they're, they're all busy eating all the cake. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's very, look, and I think this being the first um, show of the year is also going to kind of enlighten uh, a lot of new competitors that have been in the shadows that have not been able to compete um, because of COVID. They took the year off, you know, or maybe now able to travel. Yes. Um, so I know. Oh, my God. Have... How excited am I? Oh. I can't wait. Okay. I didn't know if you were going to be able to leak at it. So I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Are you? I'll be honest with you, and I just I will like, be in the US. <laughs> I just had this conversation with one of my girls today who was considering coming over. She's a, a pro in our team. She was considering coming over and competing from Australia. And we were having the conversation because we've only got one airline that's flying from Australia to the US. I don't think that's probably going to change and it's not set to change in the first quarter, which means that we we probably still won't have another airline available to us. Do you want to know the cost of flights? No. Oh, yeah, I do. I mean, I was curious. But what is it? What is it? $16,000 per person to do business class. And that's usually only about 6000 To do premium economy, it's $7,000 per person. That's usually about $3,000. And there's not much available in coach. And that's still sitting at around like the $3,000 return mark. It's about three to four times the standard price to fly it's we're still more coming, expensive it's more expensive, expensive to fly here in the states too though I've just yeah, to i don't doubt that it don't has care. gotten up but that is ridiculous it's like really that is ridiculous. really it's crazy actually ridiculous so at the moment we've got one of our um travel team you know working on trying to just find us the best route in the dates that work because you kind of only got like a three-day turnaround time where we could then get there on time to be feasible anyway because we have to be here for the gold coast show first which opens up the Mm -hmm. season first right right we're going to literally try to fly out the day after or within two days of that show ending and then we should get there for sort of three days prior to the orlando show fingers crossed right and then we're going to come spend a week or so with you and kerry and i'm going to basically be a walking balloon (laughs) Well, I'll carry you. Don't worry. I'll be rolling around with you. Like, you know what it means? Holding the ball. <laughs> like I need all the tamales that your oh, mom wants to we make. We will feed you up, hon. That is not a problem. That is going to be awesome. Introduce the new bean to all of the, uh, all of the, you know, influence. So when, it, when are you due? When, when is, when is expected so due date? My actual due date, believe it or not, what are the chances of this, man? My due She's date and my birthday. Oh, I was about to say, what if he's American? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I if he was born in America. No, you <laughs> just kidding. You can't actually fly past a certain date. And this is why I'll end oh. up okay. Because it's just before that. So I'm okay. safe. And you know what? I flew at that. I flew at the very cusp of the last minute with Kala to San Francisco to broker a deal when I was pregnant with her. So I'm, I'm comfortable with flying out, no issues with it. There are precautions I'll take, obviously. My only real thing is I don't want to catch COVID while I'm there because of course, I don't want to do it. So, we'll, so we will be super cautious, um, but we would be anyway. I mean, it yeah, is no, you guys have at the to moment. Be. I'm just trying to wait for a goddamn flight to open up. I'm, I'm so pumped y'all. She's going to be able to come to the U S finally get over here. Uh, we did actually have a couple of Australians at this um, Atlantic city show, which was cool. Um, um, just to be able to see, you know, you guys start slowly getting out and, you know, being able to start traveling again. So I know that yeah. hopefully yeah, it's picks up the season for 2022 uh, here in the States and also international shows. So I hope to see many more. Of- I think um, okay. I think a lot of the pros will probably try to budget for a flight for the world, world right? Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. I find a lot of people will. But I mean, look, I totally understand if some pros go, this I can't financially afford because it'll be very expensive flights and then as you know it's not cheap to compete at the pro level in the world show where you've got to be if you're a female anyway you're dropping five grand plus in Um, just your bikini and theme wear and just everything that has to do with prices like i can remember my very first worlds i think i spent nearly 10 grand like it's Ali, I always approximately tell me like, and this is actually a topic we could always go over. That didn't even include accommodation. 
but that exactly right. what I was going to say, you're going to do about $10,000 per show. Yeah. If you're going to be doing, um, yeah. you know, a travel as well as, you know, yeah. obviously doing the actual stuff, um, like theme wear bikini and your coaching. And you want to put all of that into it, but it's going to be, oh, yeah, well, more. if you put be all that more. in the mix, yeah. it's going to be about 15 grand. Yeah, it's easy. It, it comes out. I mean, literally, people don't realize it until after. Uh, but look, this hobby that we do is a hobby, and we spend that type of money elsewhere and other things that don't do us good service. Uh, so this is actually something that, in the long term and the long run, is going to be something very much more of an investment. Uh, so rather than something that's just lost. Um, but look, the holidays are just such a such a you know time that I think we normally fear, right? Because I know I feared it during. Uh, my, you know, fitness journey, I've like got uh, a lot of that fear of thinking like I can't enjoy and be present, but I've learned so much um, throughout the process of making, making me be present is actually what the best present is like, exactly it's going to be right. stressing over food. Um, look, just making sure we don't overindulge. I think that's one of my biggest tips. Like if I were to go through my top ranking things um, that I would just like really keep in mind is intuitive eating. Like you had said earlier, Ali, I think is the best thing um, a, a, around this holiday to be able to just be mindful of what you truly actually want, not force feeding or even right. eating things that you just generally don't care for. And that you're just kind of eating because you didn't want to be disrespectful. Yeah and it's there yeah, and you're yeah, like yeah. so and so is eating it so I should and eat it too like just know, skipping those things and having the I things think, that you um, truly actually want it I think when Steph talks about intuitive eating too when people are listening to this what she means by that is eating only when you actually feel freaking hungry yeah. stopping when you feel satisfied and guess what guys it takes 15 to 20 minutes for the brain to recognize the signals from the gut that you're even satiated so don't wolf your and inhale your food down in two seconds. Slow down. You'll have three, four times more than you need. And mm -hmm. by the time you register it, you're going to be like, I feel so sick. I'm going to vomit, so right? Bad. Like, and so everyone knows because everyone's done this at some time. We all did it as kids. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. But if you can slow your meal down, and what I always try to do, this is a trick I've used over the years, is I get in conversation on purpose so that I have to have a couple of mouthfuls and put my utensils down and keep talking so that by the time I finish my combo, my plate is slowly going down and I can't even usually finish my plate because I'm like, oh my God, I'm actually stuffed. You know, you know it's so funny that you've said that sure. though, because I find that uh, I actually had this topic earlier today with a client because they, they don't, they don't recognize that they're eating and um, talking at the same time, but they're doing it at the same time. So they are just, they're not paying attention to the food that they're eating. And they're just literally golfing down a whole plate. And then at the, at the end, it's just kind of like, you didn't even enjoy it. You didn't even yeah. realize you ate freaking a thousand calories on this plate. And you didn't even literally have any type of satisfaction, right. From the plate itself. Like you're just sitting there eating and talking at the same time and you're not paying attention to yeah. the fact that you actually you gotta, have a point that could be delicious down. yeah so down. it's like enjoy the food and actually pay attention to the food or talk to the person and engage with the conversation um otherwise you are gonna overeat regardless 100%. and that is such a bad thing i think it's just a habit um and around this time yeah i find don't go for dessert and sugary cake and cookies and shit first. Yeah, exactly. Eat That's your actual like, plate of wholesome food protein first. is what I was going to for sure. Yeah, like, then if you want like the, then if you want the the twenty percent soul food, go for it. You know, go mm -hmm. for it, but don't do that first. Exactly. Because who's gonna want to have like I don't know meat and veg after they've started with cake and cookie? Like it doesn't quite. You don't. You don't want to. And that's the problem. You'll just continue getting stuffed on the sweets. Exactly. You want to just get full off the sweets exactly. instead of like having real food, which is essentially like your proteins and maybe dishes that have more vegetables and fiber. So go for the potatoes, go for, you know, a little bit of like the turkey, take a look at trick. And I think this is just very helpful at any type of dinner like this is taking off the skin to the 
ham and to the turkey yeah. and making sure you reduce their fat that way. And you just have the lean protein. Um, if there's like roast and like beef, you know, stew, stuff like that, then of course, like you just enjoy it guys, like have the potatoes in it, have the carrots, yeah. have the, you know, obviously like the, the red meat, but um, like Ali said, wait for the sweets till after you actually yeah. have fulfilled, you know, some type of satiety for your hunger. And then you go and have a little treat. And instead exactly. of it's only it's only mm -hmm. because if you are satiated, no matter how good it tastes, you're not going to gorge yourself on yeah. it. Right? The other thing is too, eating that stuff first, it's so much more palatable that you are way more likely to just be like, you know, head down. Bum Ooh, I want more. I want to finish this and just only eat this. And by the end of the time that you actually realize how much you ate, you've ate probably a hundred grams of fat, uh, like 200 grams of sugar. I'm being so, and these are just very generous numbers. These are generous numbers, y'all, because this is actually probably more because I'm we will so go for the whole I'm not pot. in America. <laughs> Oh, okay, guys. If I compare to you uh, just a cheesecake, if I give you a cheesecake, it's uh, ridiculous yeah. the macros on it, Ali. Like, it, 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 and I want to go on the deep end because I, I, I know I always talk about cheesecake, y'all, but seriously, like, it is probably <laughs> my my nemesis, and it is really one of those things that I will stay away from because I understand what yeah, how it bad contains it and how bad it is. I will have, and this is actually a very good hack for anyone that is maybe dealing with these bad um, cravings and really wants to enjoy these things look bake it yourself this is yes. what i will do i will make my yeah. own yeah. literally low fat version of a cheesecake yeah. and make it pumpkin style and you know yeah. add some actual pumpkin you know uh, puree and then make in the uh, no fat actual cream cheese and add in like even some protein to it with a protein powder blending i'm just being like really really good on the calorie and macro size and switching up the ingredients instead of using nothing but the you know pure sugar i'll use a sweetener like stevia or splenda you know whatever it is that i you know want it to kind of taste like as you guys know it has a good little different taste which from sweetener or sweetener so just being able to replace and substitute maybe some of these things that you feel like you are just not going to be able to live without um or so just i think i think the key what you just said is if you know you're going to somewhere where it's going to be really calorie dense options you can't control it and whatever else Take a plate or two. Uh -huh. Look like you're a great guest for stars. Absolutely, you are. <laughs> safeguarded yourself, and you know, yep. no matter what, you've got two plates of things uh -huh. you go to, and then you can just choose proteins. You know, yes. like or if or if, if it's a dessert you want, take the one like like Steph said, make it. Healthy. You can make some good brownies that are lower carb, lower fat, lower sugar. Again, guys, I think one of the biggest things with these desserts and treats are the sugar context and the fat context. So us being able to, to just substitute for an actual good butter that is yeah. going to be beneficial to you, maybe not having just such a margarine, just type of butter all the time and, you know, and have canola oil and everything like they recommend inside the recipes, like switching it out for actually some good oils, coconut oils you know, doing a sweetener instead of the actual sugars. If you're going to go with some sugars that you want to be a little more natural with and doing some brown sugar over, obviously all just yeah. freaking cane sugar. So just being able to find what things you want to replace and substitute, but usually the sugars and fats will help you tremendously and being able to kind of uh, make some cookies or, you know, cakes or pies, whatever it is that you're wanting to make. Um, but those are usually things that I know I've done in the past and recommend um, and it helps tremendously. But at the same time, I think being able to enjoy what is there, if you don't want to cook, it's about portion control. It's not overeating and it's just exactly. having a little bit, like literally just have a little enjoy and savor everybody. <laughs> and then also, you know, post that initial meal and, you know, having enjoyed mm -hmm. that, don't feel like you've got to keep eating later just because it's still there. I mean, food lasts yeah. for days, people. It doesn't yes. have to be eaten all in one day. Yep. You can yep. literally have dog for a couple of days. Yep. Like it's, I've never understood that, but I, it seems like everyone feels like almost they have to eat it just because it's left on the table. So, you know, maybe don't do that. Same but with have to eat it because it's there. So just guys, choose the things that you actually are going to want if you don't want. And if you want it all, please just eat small portions of it. 
small bits of everything. Enjoy it all. It's your refeed, diet break, whatever it is. You can talk to your coach and try to try to implement something like that. You know, I think it's very important for the mind to not overstress on this holiday because it's the wrong thing to stress about. I, it's so funny. I think uh, one of the memes and things that like I, and, and just quotes that always resonates to me around the holidays is, you know, when people are just so stressful about what they eat during the holidays, you know, and instead they should be more freaking worried about what they eat from after new year's to christmas okay like it's just something we're wrong wrong worries y'all like this is not the time that you need to start your diet okay and start worrying so much about your diet so just be intuitive be present and if you're in a prep you gotta you gotta suck it up (laughs) You 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 gotta miss it and just stay on track well, I hope everyone has an absolutely amazing Christmas. I hope you and yes. Kerry have an, uh, an absolutely Same, amazing Christmas Eve. And everyone too, please. Y'all enjoy yourselves and be yeah. present with your family. And for, Ali, anyone, um, can't wait. for anyone who's traveling, travel safe. Because this is the time, I don't know about there, but in Australia, this is our highest mortality rate on the roads like it's really, really? dangerous time yeah we yeah so we always you'll always hear Aussies say you know travel safe drive carefully because it's it's our worst time this time in Easter time is the worst time of the year every single year we have ridiculously Easter. high casualties so you know I always say Sad. whenever you're traveling be alert take your rest stops you know break up your drive if you're going long distance from state to state like we did you stop and you stay overnight like we, like we did, like just mm-hmm. be safe because, you know, no one wants totally. to. And if you're visiting family here, that's a very good recommendation because, I mean, yeah, a lot of traveling does happen around here, but oh I think people be safe and be careful and yeah. enjoy your family. And I can't wait to see you, Allie. I will see yes. you soon. And uh, hey, guys, we'll bring in the new year and have, a, you know, some few things to talk about on the podcast oh, uh, coming into the new year. So uh, if you guys actually have some interest of a couple new topics that you guys would like to hear us, you know, talk about coming into the new year, please let us know and uh, give us some feedback. Uh, we appreciate we every single one of you. Super grateful for all you listeners. Uh, honestly, like it's such a blessing. I get like random people come up and, you know, say that they listen to the podcast and it's so humbling and it's very special to me. So I appreciate every single one of you. Thank Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you like what we have to say. And, you know, as Steph said, we always want to hear from you. So please let us know. That would help. All right, guys. Until next time. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Queen Divas Queens of Fitness podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Queen Divas Pod, on Twitter at Queen Divas 4, and follow our hosts on Instagram, Alicia at Alicia Gowans underscore WBFF Pro, and Steph at Stephanie Ayala 7. See you all next week.